John Tyler, 1790-1862, was the 10th President of the United States, serving from 1841 to 1845. He holds a unique place in American history as the first vice president to assume the presidency due to the death of a sitting president. Here's an overview of John Tyler's life and political career. John Tyler was born on March 29, 1790, in Charles City County, Virginia, to a prominent Virginia family. His father, John Tyler Sr., was a judge, and his mother, Mary Morrow Armistead Tyler, came from a wealthy plantation-owning family. Tyler attended the College of William and Mary in Virginia, graduating in 1807. He later studied law and was admitted to the Virginia Bar in 1809. John Tyler, the 10th President of the United States, served as the governor of Virginia prior to becoming president. Here are some key aspects of John Tyler's achievements during his tenure as governor. Governorship of Virginia, 1825-1827 Tyler supported and advocated for internal improvements in infrastructure development within Virginia. This included improvements to roads, canals, and other transportation networks to facilitate economic growth and connectivity. During Tyler's term as governor, efforts were made to reform and improve the state's education system. He supported initiatives to enhance public education and promote broader access to learning opportunities. Tyler worked to address financial issues facing the state. He focused on responsible fiscal policies, seeking to manage the state's finances effectively and ensure economic stability. Throughout his political career, including his time as governor, Tyler was a strong advocate for states' rights. He believed in limiting the powers of the federal government in favor of states' autonomy and individual liberties. Tyler's tenure as governor coincided with debates over federal tariffs, and he was known for his resistance to what he perceived as excessive federal power. This commitment to states' rights would continue to define his political philosophy. Tyler's time as governor of Virginia contributed to his political experience and influence. His positions on states' rights and economic policies became prominent aspects of his political identity shaping his later roles as a U.S. senator, vice president, and ultimately, president. Tyler's experience as governor and his views on states' rights influenced his presidency. His commitment to strict constructionist principles and opposition to what he saw as federal overreach had implications for his presidential policies and decisions. It's important to note that Tyler's legacy as governor is often overshadowed by his role as president, particularly during a period of significant sectional tensions leading up to the Civil War. His presidency was marked by controversy and challenges, including the annexation of Texas and debates over the expansion of slavery. Tyler's commitment to states' rights and individual liberties remained consistent throughout his political career. John Tyler's love life and marriage were notable for the controversy surrounding his second marriage. Here are key aspects of his love life. Letitia Christian Tyler John Tyler married his first wife, Letitia Christian, on March 29, 1813. The couple had eight children together. Letitia and John Tyler had a long and relatively stable marriage. She played a supportive role in his political career, both during his time in the Virginia legislature and the United States Senate. Letitia suffered a stroke in 1839 that left her partially paralyzed. Despite her health challenges, she continued to fulfill her role as the First Lady. Letitia Christian Tyler passed away on September 10, 1842 while John Tyler was serving as the 10th President of the United States. John Tyler's second marriage became a source of controversy. In 1844, while still in office, he married Julia Gardiner, a woman 30 years his junior. Public Reaction The marriage to Julia caused a stir, and it was the first time in U.S. history that a sitting president married while in office. The public and political reaction was mixed, with some supporting the president's right to remarry while others criticized the age difference in the quick remarriage. John and Julia Tyler had seven children together, making him one of the most prolific presidents in terms of the number of children. Legacy John Tyler's second marriage contributed to his historical legacy, and it added an unconventional aspect to his presidency. The public reaction to his remarriage reflected the changing social norms of the time. After leaving the presidency, John Tyler and Julia retired to his plantation, Sherwood Forest, in Virginia. Julia continued to be active in social and political circles. John Tyler's love life was characterized by a devoted first marriage to Letitia Christian Tyler and a controversial second marriage to Julia Gardiner Tyler. The remarriage while in office marked a unique aspect of Tyler's personal life and contributed to his historical legacy. 
Tyler began his political career in the Virginia House of Delegates, serving from 1811 to 1816. He later became the governor of Virginia from 1825 to 1827. Tyler served as a United States senator from Virginia from 1827 to 1836. His positions often aligned with states' rights and strict constructionist views. In 1840, Tyler was elected as the vice president on the Whig Party ticket alongside President William Henry Harrison. However, Harrison's death in April 1841 elevated Tyler to the presidency. Tyler's accession to the presidency was not without controversy, as some questioned the legitimacy of his role. He asserted his position as the accidental president and adopted a strict interpretation of the Tyler's presidency was marked by challenges, including economic issues, disagreements with the Whig Party, which led to his expulsion from the party and the annexation of Texas. Tyler played a significant role in the annexation of Texas, which occurred shortly before the end of his term. Texas joined the Union in 1845. After leaving office, Tyler retired to his plantation, Sherwood Forest, in Virginia. He remained involved in political affairs, supporting the Confederacy during the Civil War. John Tyler passed away on January 18, 1862, before the Civil War reached its conclusion. John Tyler is often remembered for his role as the first vice president to become president due to the death of a sitting president. His strict interpretation of the Constitution and states' rights positions influenced the political landscape of his time. Tyler's presidency was marked by his clashes with the Whig Party and his adherence to certain principles, such as vetoes of Whig-sponsored legislation, made him a controversial figure. John Tyler served as the 10th President of the United States from 1841 to 1845. His presidency was marked by various events and policy decisions, but it's important to note that Tyler was not affiliated with a political party for much of his term. Consequently, some of the initiatives associated with his administration may not be traditional reforms in the sense of comprehensive policy changes. Here are some notable aspects of Tyler's presidency. One of the significant events during Tyler's presidency was the annexation of Texas. The process began during his term, and Texas became a state in the Union shortly after he left office. In 1842, Tyler's administration negotiated the Webster-Ashburton Treaty with Britain. The treaty addressed various boundary disputes between the United States and Canada, particularly along the main New Brunswick border. John Tyler, the 10th President of the United States, was known for his assertive use of the presidential veto particularly in the context of his disagreements with the Whig Party, which he had initially been associated with before his expulsion from the party. Here are key aspects of Tyler's use of vetoes during his presidency. Tyler's presidency was marked by a fundamental disagreement with the Whig Party over economic policies. The Whigs, inspired by Henry Clay's American system, sought to re-establish a national bank to manage the country's finances. In 1841, Tyler vetoed the Fiscal Corporation Bill, which aimed to establish a new national bank. Tyler's veto reflected his commitment to strict constructionist principles and his belief that the proposed bank was unconstitutional. Following the first veto, the Whigs attempted to pass a second bill for the creation of a national bank. Tyler again vetoed the proposal in 1842, reiterating his constitutional objections. Tyler's vetoes of Whig-sponsored legislation, especially related to banking, led to a breakdown in his relationship with the Whig Party. Whig leaders saw him as betraying their party's principles. In response to Tyler's vetoes and refusal to support Whig economic policies, the Whig party formally expelled him from the party in September 1841. Tyler became known as the man without a party. Tyler continued to use his veto power to reject Whig-sponsored internal improvement bills, which were part of the party's economic agenda. Tyler's firm stance on vetoes, combined with his refusal to align with the Whigs or Democrats, left him politically isolated. He served the latter part of his term without the support of a major political party. Tyler's use of the veto power, particularly in opposition to the Whig Party's economic proposals, set a precedent for presidents asserting their constitutional authority. His actions contributed to the evolving understanding of presidential powers. The political conflicts and sectional tensions during Tyler's presidency foreshadowed the broader issues that would eventually lead to the U.S. Civil War. The debate over the national bank and economic policies was closely tied to regional and ideological divisions. John Tyler's use of vetoes, particularly in the context of his disagreements with the Whig Party, played a significant role in shaping the dynamics of his presidency. 
His assertiveness in asserting presidential powers and adherence to strict constructionist principles left a lasting impact on the office. Tyler's presidency was marked by tension with the Whig Party, the party that he had been elected with as vice president. He clashed with Whigs over economic policies, including the re-establishment of a national bank. Tyler vetoed several pieces of Whig-sponsored legislation, including bills related to the establishment of a national bank. His use of the presidential veto contributed to his expulsion from the Whig Party. Tyler's presidency is notable for the precedent it set when he assumed the presidency following the death of President William Henry Harrison. His assertion of full presidential powers during his term, despite initially being labeled as acting president, set a precedent for future successions. The annexation of Texas under Tyler's administration was a contentious issue tied to the expansion of slavery. The debate over the annexation contributed to the broader sectional tensions that would eventually lead to the U.S. Civil War. While John Tyler's presidency is not typically associated with sweeping reforms, his tenure included significant events such as the annexation of Texas and negotiations with Britain. The dynamics of his presidency were shaped by his unique position as a president without strong party support, leading to clashes with political opponents. Tyler's actions and decisions had lasting implications for the nation's history. John Tyler's presidency and political career were shaped by the complex issues of his time, including states' rights, economic challenges, and the expansion of the United States. His legacy is a subject of historical debate, reflecting the complexities of the era in which he served. The annexation of Texas into the United States was a complex and controversial process that unfolded during the 1840s. Texas had declared its independence from Mexico in 1836, forming the Republic of Texas. However, it faced financial challenges and struggled to secure recognition from other nations. Many Texans and some Americans desired the annexation of Texas into the United States. However, the issue was highly divisive in the U.S. due to concerns about the expansion of slavery and potential conflict with Mexico. President John Tyler, in his final days in office, made the annexation of Texas a priority. He saw it as a way to secure a foreign policy victory and leave a lasting legacy. In April 1844, Tyler signed a treaty with the Republic of Texas for annexation to the United States. However, the treaty faced strong opposition in the U.S. Senate, where it failed to gain the necessary two-thirds majority for ratification. The annexation of Texas became a key issue in the 1844 presidential election. Democratic candidate James K. Polk favored annexation, while Whig candidate Henry Clay took a more cautious stance. Polk's victory in the election was seen as a mandate for the expansionist agenda of Manifest Destiny, which included the annexation of Texas. In December 1844, President Tyler, in coordination with President-elect Polk, proposed the annexation of Texas through a joint resolution of Congress. This required a simple majority in both the House of Representatives and the Senate. On February 28, 1845, the joint resolution passed in the House with a vote of 120 to 98 and in the Senate with a vote of 27 to 25. President Tyler signed the resolution on March 1, 1845. The Republic of Texas accepted the terms of annexation in a popular referendum in October 1845. Texas officially became the 28th state of the United States on December 29, 1845. Mexico, which had never recognized Texas independence, viewed annexation as a violation of its sovereignty leading to strained relations and contributing to the outbreak of the Mexican-American War in 1846. The annexation of Texas was a pivotal event in U.S. history, marking the expansion of the United States to the Southwest and setting the stage for conflicts with Mexico. The issue of whether Texas would enter the Union as a slave state or a free state intensified sectional tensions and played a role in the lead-up to the American Civil War. Tyler did not have a direct role in the Civil War itself. However, his political legacy and positions during the secession crisis and the early stages of the conflict are noteworthy. John Tyler had Southern roots and sympathies, and he became increasingly aligned with Southern sentiments. He was a slaveholder and held strong states' rights views. As the nation teetered on the brink of war, Tyler played a role in efforts to find a peaceful resolution to the secession crisis. He was elected to represent Virginia at the Peace Convention of 1861 in Washington, D.C where representatives from various states sought ways to prevent conflict. Following Virginia's secession from the Union in April 1861, Tyler was elected to the Provisional Confederate Congress. He accepted the position but did not actively participate due to his declining health. 
John Tyler passed away on January 18, 1862, before having a significant impact or active role in the Confederate government. His death occurred during the early stages of the Civil War, and his political influence had waned by this time. Tyler's legacy is complex and controversial. While he served as the President of the United States and briefly aligned himself with the Confederacy, he did not live to see the full extent of the war or its aftermath. Historians often debate Tyler's actions and legacy during the secession crisis. Some view him as a defender of states' rights who sought a peaceful resolution, while others criticize him for his shift in allegiance and association with the Confederacy.